Our living world is fascinating, diverse and amazing, complex. We can try to understand its complexity by investigating processes at various levels of biological organization, macromolecules, cells, tissues, organs, individual organisms, populations, communities, ecosystem and biomes. At any level of biological organization, we can ask two type of questions. For example, when we hear the bulbul singing early morning in the garden, we may ask how does the bird sing or why does the bird sing? This how type question is the mechanism behind the process while the why type questions seek the significance of the process. For the first question in our example, the answer might be in terms of the operation of the voice box and the vibrating bone in the bird. Whereas for the second question, the answer may be why in the birds need to communicate with the mat during breeding season. When you observe nature around you with scientific frame of mind, you will certainly come up with many interesting questions of both type. Why are my? Why are night blooming flowers generally white? How does the bee know which flower has nectar? Why does cactus has so many thorns? How does the chick spares recognize her own mother and so on? You have already learned in previous classes that ecology is a subject which studies the interaction among organism and between the organism and its physical abiotic environment. Ecology. Ecology is basically concerned with four levels of biological organization, organism, population, community and biomes. In this chapter, we explore ecology at population level. So we are studying now populations, population attributes in nature. We rarely find isolated single individuals of any species. Majority of them live in group in well-defined geographical areas. Share or compete, share or compete for similar resources. Potentially interbreed and thus constitute a population. Although the term interbreeding implies sexual reproduction, a group of individuals resulting from even asexual reproduction is also generally considered a population for the purpose of ecologic, ecological studies. All the cormorants in a wetland, rats in an abundant dwelling, thick wood trees in a forest, tract, bacteria in a cultural plant and lotus plant in a pond are some example of population. In earlier chapter, you have learned it. Although an individual organism is the firm that has to cope with a changed environment, it is at the population level that natural selection operates to evolve the desired traits. Population ecology is therefore an important area because it links ecology to a population, genetics and evolution. A population has certain attributes whereas an individual organism does not. An individual may have birth and death, but a population has birth rate and death rate. In a population, this rate refers to per capita birth and death. The rate, hence expressed, are change in number, increase or decrease with respect to members of the population. Here is an example. If in a pond there will be 20 lotus plants last year and through the production 8 new plants are added, Taking the current population to 28, we calculate the birth rate as 8 upon 20 equal to 0.4 of its principal lotus per year. If four individual in a laboratory population of 40 fruit flies died during a specified time interval, say a week, the that rate in a population during the period is 4 upon 40 equal to 0.1 individual per fruit fly per week. Another attribute characteristic of population is sex ratio. An individual is either male or a female but a population has sex ratio. Example 60% of the population are female 
and 40 percent man a population at any given time is composed of individual of different ages if the age distribution percent individual or a given age or age group is plotted for the population the resulting structure is called age pyramid for human population the age pyramid generally shows age distribution of males and females in a diagram thus the slope of the pyramid reflects the growth status of the population whether it is growing stable or declining the size of the population tells us a lot about its status in the habitat whatever ecological processes we wish to investigate in a population be it the outcome of competition with another species the impact of predator or the effect of a pesticide application we always evaluate from in terms of any change in the population size the size in nature could be as low as less than 10 siberian cranes at bharatpur wetlands in an area or go to millions like chalinodomonas in a pond population size technically called population density designated as capital n need not necessary to be measured in numbers only although total number is generally the most appropriate measure of population density it is in some cases either meaningless or difficult to de- determine in an area if there are 200 carat grass parthenium hysteroforces plants but only a single huge banyan tree with a large canopy stating that the population density of banyan is low relative to that of carat grass amount to understanding the enorm- enormous role of the banyan tree in that community in such cases the percent cover or biomass is more meaningful measure of the population size the total number is again not an easily adoptable measure if the population is huge and counting is impossible or very time consuming if you have a dense laboratory culture of bacteria in a petri dish what is the best measure to report its density sometime in certain ecological investigation there is no need to know the absolute population density relative density serve the purpose equally for intense the number of fish caught per trap is good enough measure of its population density in the lake we are mostly obliged to estimate population sizes indirectly without actual counting them or seeing them the tiger census in our national park and tiger reserve is often based on pug marks and fecal pellets population growth the size of the population for any species is not a static parameter it keeps changing with time depending on various factors including food availability predation pressure and adverse weather in fact it is this change in population density that give us some idea of what is happening to the population whether it is flourishing or declining whatever might be the ultimate reason the density of a population in a given habitat during a given period fluctuate fluctuates due to changes in four basic processes two of which natality and immigration contribute to an increase in population density and to mortality and immigration to a decrease natality refers to the number of birth during a given period in the population data added to the initial density mortality is the number of death of the population during a given period immigration is the number of individual of the same species that have come into the habitat from elsewhere during the time period under consideration 
Immigration is the number of individuals of the population who left their habitat and go on somewhere else during the time period under consideration. So, if n is the population density at time t, then its density at time t plus 1 is n t plus 1 is equal to n t plus birth plus immigration minus death plus immigration. You can see from the above equation that the population density will increase with the number of birth plus the number of immigrants. B plus I is more than the number of death plus number of immigrants. D plus E. Under normal condition, birth and death are the most important factor influencing population density. The other two factors assuming importance only under special conditions. For instance, if a new habitat has been colonized, immigration may result or contribute more significantly to population growth than birth rate. Growth Models Does the growth of a population with time show an specific and predictable pattern we have been concerned about? Unbreedable human population, growth and problems are created by it in our country and it is therefore natural for us to be con Curious if different animal population in nature behave in the same way or some show restraints on growth. Perhaps we can learn a lesson or two from nature or how to control population growth. Exponential growth Resource, food and space availability is obviously essential for the unimpeded growth of the population. Obviously essential for the unimpeded growth of population. Ideally when resources in the habitat are unlimited, each species has the ability to realize fully its innate potential to grow in number. As Darwin observed while developing his theory of natural selection, then the population grows in an exponential or geometric fashion. In a population of size n, the birth rate, not total number, but per capita birth, are represented as b and death rate per capita death rate as d. Then the increase or decrease in n during a unit time period t, that is dn upon dt will be dn upon d t is equal to b minus d into n. Let b minus d is equal to r then dn upon dt is equal to r upon n the r in this equation is called intrinsic rate of natural increase and is very important parameter chosen for assessing impact of any biotic or abiotic factor on population growth to give us some idea about the magnitude of r values for the Norway red, the R is 0.015 and for the floor beetle it is 0.12. In 1981 the value of R for human population in, in India was 0.0205. Find out what the current R value is. For, cal for calculating it you need to know the birth rate and that rate. The above equation describes the exponential or geometric growth pattern of population and results in a J-shaped curve when we plot in relationship to time. If you are familiar with the basic calculus, you can derive the integral form of the exponential growth equation as nt is equal to n naught e to power rt, where nt is the population density after time t, n0 is the population density at time 0, R equal to intrinsic rate of natural increase E is the base of natural log logarithm. Any species growing exponentially under unlimited resource condition can reach enormous population density in a short time. Darwin showed how even a slow growing animal like elephant could reach enormous numbers in the absence of checks. The following is an NA coded popularly narrated to demonstrate dramatically how fast a huge population could build up when growing exponentially.
So the agents stole the king and the minister sat for a chess game. The king confident of winning the game was ready to accept any bet proposed by the minister. The minister humbly said and if he won. So there is a story in this paragraph which is not so much important. So you can check it. So we are going to read logistic growth. Second point. No population of any species in nature has it at its disposal unlimited resource to permit exponential growth. This leads to competition between individuals for limited resources. Eventually, the fittest individual will survive and repro reproduce. The government of many countries have also realized this fact and introduced various restraints with a view to limit human population growth in nature. A given habitat has enough resource to support a maximum possible number, beyond which no further growth is possible. Let us call this limit as nature's carrying capacity K for that species in that habitat. A population growing in an habitat with limited resource show initially a lag phase followed by a phase of acceleration and a deceleration and finally an asymptote. When the population density reaches the carrying capacity a product of n in relation to time result in a sigmoid curve. This type of population growth is called were lost per logistic growth and is described by the following equation dn upon dt is equal to r n bracket k minus n upon k where n is population density at time t r is intrinsic rate of natural increase k is carrying capacity since resource for growth for most animal population are finite and become limiting sooner or later, the logistic growth model is considered more realistic. Logistic growth model is considered more realistic. Gathered from government census data, the population figures for India for the last hundred years. Plot them and check which growth pattern is evident. Life history variations population evolved to maximize their reproductive fitness also called Darwinian, Darwinian fitness high R value in the habitat in which they live under a particular set of selection pressure organisms evolved toward the most efficient reproductive strategy some organisms breed only ferns in their lifetime Pacific salmon fish bamboo while other breeds many times during their lifetime most birds and mammals some produces a large number of small sized offspring oyster pelagic fishes while other produces a small number of large sized offspring birds mammal so which is desirable for maximizing fitness ecologists suggest that life history trait of Organisms have evolved in relation to the construction imposed by the abiotic and biotic component of the habitat in which they live. Evolution of life history trait in different species is currently an important area of research being conducted by ecologists. Population Interactions can you think of any natural habitat on earth that is inhabited just by a single species? Can you think? No. There is no such habitat and such a situation is even unconvincible. For any species the minimal requirement is one or more species on which it can feed. Even a plant species which make its own food cannot survive alone. It needs soil microbes to break down the organic matter in soil and return the inorganic nutrient for absorption and then how will the plant manage pollination without animal agent it is obviously that in nature animal plant and microbe do not and cannot live in an isolation but interact in various ways to form a biological community even in minimal communities many in Directive linkages exist, although all may not be really apparent. 
inter specific interaction arise from the interaction of the population of two different species they could be beneficial detrimental or neutral neither harm nor benefit to one of the species or both assigning plus sign for beneficial minus for detrimental zero for neutral interaction let us look all the possible outcome of inter specific interaction population interactions plus plus species with a plus plus mutualism minus minus competition species a plus species b predation species a plus species b minus parasitism species plus species b zero is commensalism species a is minus species b is zero that is amensalism both the species benefit in mutualism and both lose in competition in their interaction with each other in both parasitism and predation only one species benefits parasite and predator respectively and the interaction is detrimental to the other species host and prey respectively the interaction where one species benefited and the other is neither benefited nor harmed is called commensalism in amensalism on the other hand one species is harmed whereas the other is unaffected predation parasitism and commensalism share a common characteristics in the interacting species living closely together predation what would happen to all the energy fixed by autotrophic organism if the amenity has no animal to eat the plant you could think of predation as nature's way of transferring to higher trophic level the energy fixed by plant when we think of predator and prey most probably it is the tiger and the deer that really comes to our mind but a sparrow eating anacidin is no less a predator although animals eating plants are categorized separately as herbivores they are in a broad ecological context not very different from predation besides acting as conduits for energy transfer across trophic levels predator play other role important roles they keep prey population under control but for predators prey species could achieve very high population density and cause ecosystem instability when certain exotic species are introduced into a geographical area they become invasive and start spreading fast because the invaded land and does not have its natural predator the prickly pear cactus introduced into australia in the year 1920s caused havoc by spreading rapidly into millions of hectares of ranged land finally the invasive cactus was brought under control only after a cactus feeding predator a moth from its natural habitat was introduced into the country biological control methods adopted in agriculture pest control are based on the ability of the predators to regulate prey population predator are also help in maintaining species diversity in a community by reducing the intensity of competition among competing prey species in the rocky in in the rocky intertidal communities of the american pacific coast the starfish pisester is an important predator in the field experiment when all the starfish were removed from an enclosed intertidal area more than 10 species of invertebrates become extinct within a year because of interspecific competition If a predator is too efficient and overexploits it, 
its prey then the prey might become extinct and for following it the predator will also become extinct for lack of food this is the reason why predator in nature are prudent prey species have evolved various defense to lessen the impact of predation some species of insect and frog are cryptically colored camouflaged to avoid being detected easily by the predator some are poisonous poisonous and therefore avoided by the predator the monarch butterfly is highly distasteful to its predator bird because of its special chemical present in its body interestingly the butterfly acquires the chemical during the caterpillar stage by feeding on a poisonous weed for plant herbivore are the predators nearly 25% of all insect are known to be phytophthorosus means feeding on plant sap and other part of plant which is phytophagus the problem is particularly severe for plant because unlike animal they cannot run away from their predator plant therefore have evolved an astonishing variety of morphological and chemical defense against herbivores thorns acacia cactus are the most common morphological means of defense many plant produce and store chemicals that make the herbivore sick when they are eaten in a bit feeding or digestion disrupt its reproduction or even kill it you must have seen the wheat calotropus growing in abandoned fields the plant produce highly poisonous cardiac glycosides and that's why you never see that any cattle or goats browsing on its plant a wide variety of chemical substances that we extract from plant on a commercial scale nicotine caffeine quinine strychnine opium etc are produced by them actually as defense against grazers and browsers competition when darwin spoke of the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest in nature he was convinced that interspecific competition is a potent force in organic evolution it is generally believed that competition occurs when closely related closely closely related species compete for the same resource they are limited but this is not entirely true firstly totally unrelated species could also compete for the same resource for instance in some shallow south american lakes visiting flamingos and resident fishes compete for their common food the jew plankton in the lake secondly resource need not be limiting for competition to occur in interspecific competition the feeding efficiency of one species might be reduced due to the interfering and inhibiting presence of the other species even if resource food and resource are abundant therefore competition is best defined as a process in which the fine sorry in which fitness of the one species measured in terms of the r the intrinsic rate of increase is significantly lower in the presence of another species it is relatively easy to demonstrate in laboratory experiments as goes and other experiment of ecologist did when resources are limited the competitively superior species will eventually eliminate the other species but evidence for such competitive exclusion occurring in nature is not always conclusive A strong and persuasive circumstantial evidence does exist however in some cases the abandoned tortoise in galapagos island become extinct within a decade after goats were introduced on the land island apparently the gra- the greater browsing efficiency of the goats because of its greater browser efficiency another evidence for is the occurrence of competition in nature comes from the what is called competitive release 
एस स्पीसीज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू ए स्मॉल जियोग्राफिकल एरिया बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ कॉम्पिटिटिवली सुपीरियर स्पीसीज फाउंड टू एक्सपेंड इट्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशनल रेंज ड्रामेटिकली वेन द कॉम्पिटिंग स्पीसीज इज एक्सपेरिमेंटली रिमूव Coninals allegations filled experiments showed that on the rocky sea coast of Scotland, the larger and the competitively superior Bernacle Balanus dominates the intertidal area and excludes the smaller Bernacle Chathamma Chathamalus from the end on. In general. Herbivores and plant appear to be more adversely affected by competition than carnivores. Gauss competitive exclusion principle states that two closely related species competing for the same resource could not and cannot coexist indefinitely, and the competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually. This may be true if resources are limited, but not otherwise. More recent studies do not support such gross generalization about competition, while they do not rule out the occurrence of interspecific competition in nature. The point they point out that species-facing competition might evolve mechanism that promote coexistence rather than exclusion. One such mechanism is resource partitioning. If two species compete. For the same resource, they could avoid competition by choosing, for instance, different time for feeding or different foraging patterns. MacArthur MacArthur showed that five closely related species of wild bulls living on the same tree were able to avoid competition and coexist due to behavioral difference in their foraging activities. third parasitism consider considering that the parasitic mode of the life ensures free lodging and meals it is not surprisingly that parasitism has evolved in so many taxonomic group from plants to higher vertebrates many parasites have evolved to be host specific they can parasites only a specific single species of host in such a way that both host and the parasite tend to co-evolve that is if the host evolves a special mechanism for rejecting or resisting the parasite the parasite has to evolve mechanism to counteract and neutralize them in order to be successful with the same host species in accordance with their lifestyle parasites evolve special adaptations such as the loss of unnecessary sense organs presence of adhesive organs or suckers to clean on the host loss of digestive system and high reproductive capacities the life cycle of parasites are often complex involving one or two intermediate host or vector to facilitate parasitization of its primary host the human liver fluke a trematode parasite depend on two intermediate host a snail and a fish to complete its life cycle the mal the malarial parasite needs a vector mosquito to spread to other host majority of the parasites harm the host they may reduce the survival growth and reproduction of the host and reduce the population density they might render the host more vulnerable to predation by making it physically weak do you believe that an idle parasite should be able to thrive within the host without harming it then why did it nature natural selection tend to be the evolution of such totally harmless parasites Parasites that feed on the external surface of the host organism are called ectoparasites. The most familiar example of this group are the lice on humans and ticks on the dog. Many marine fish are infested with the ectoparasite copepods. 
कर सकता है पेरासाइट प्लांट दैट इज कॉमनली फाउंड ग्रोइंग ऑन द हेड प्लांट हैज फोस्ट इट क्लोरोफिल एंड लीव्स इन द कोर्स ऑफ एवोल्यूशन इट डिराइव्स इट्स न्यूट्रिशन फ्रॉम हिट्स होस्ट प्लांट व्हिच इट पेरासाइट्स द फीमेल मॉस्किटो इज नॉट कंसीडर्ड अ पेरासाइट आल्सो इट नीड्स आवर ब्लड फॉर रिप्रोडक्शन कैन यू एक्सप्लेन व्हाई in contrast endoparasites are those that live inside the host body at different sites liver kidney lung rbc etc the life cycle of endoparasites are more complex because of their extreme specialization their morphological and anatomical features are greatly simplified by lamp emphasizing their reproductive potential brood parasitism in birds is a fascinating example of parasitism in which the parasitic bird lay its egg in the nest of its host and let the host incubate them during the course of evolution the egg of the parasite bird have evolved to resemble the host eggs in size and color to reduce the chance of the host bird detecting the foreign eggs and ejecting them from the nest try to follow the movement of the cuckoo quail and the crow in your neighborhood park during the breeding season spring summer and watch brood parasites in them fourth commensalism this is the interaction in which one species benefits and the other is neither harmed nor benefited an orchid growing as an epiphyte on a mango branch and barnacles growing on the back of the bell benefit while neither the mango tree nor the bell derives any apparent benefit the cattle aggregate the cattle aggregate and grazing cattle in close association a site you are most likely to cage if you live in farmed rural areas is a classic example of commensalism the aggregates allow forage close to where the cattle are grazing because the cattle as they move stir up and flush out insects from the vegetation that otherwise might be difficult for the aggregates to find and catch another example of commensalism is the interaction between sea anemone that has stinging tentacles and the clown fish that lives among them the fish gets protection from predator which is stay away from the stinging tentacles the anemone does not appear to derive any benefit by hosting the clownfish fifth mutualism this interaction confers benefit on both the interacting species lichens represent an in- intimate mutualistic relationship between a fungus and photosynthetic algae or cyanobacteria similarly the mycorrhiza are association between fungi and the root of hair plant the fungi helps the plant in the absorption of essential nutrient from the soil while the plant in turn provide the fungi with energy yielding carbohydrates the most spectacular and evolutionarily fascinating fascinating example of mutualism are found in plant animal relationship plant need the animal of need the help of animals for pollinating their flowers and dispersing their seeds animals obviously have to be paid fees for the services that plants expect from them plant offer rewards or fees in the form of pollen and nectar for pollinator and juicy and nutritious fruits for seed dispersal but the mutually beneficial system should also be safeguard against cheater for example animal that try to steal nectar without adding in pollination now you can see why plant animal interaction are often involve coevolution of the mutualism mutualist that is the evolution of the flower and its pollinator species are tightly linked with one another in many species of fig trees there is a tight one to one relationship within the pollinator species of wasp it means that a given fig wasp fig species can be pollinated only by its partner wasp species and no other species can pollinated that female wasp uses the fruit not only as an 
ovi position egg laying site but uses the developing seed within the fruit for nourishing its larva the wasp pollinates the fig in inflorescence while searching for suitable egg laying sites in return for the favor of pollination the fig offers the wasp some of its developing seeds as food for the developing wasp larva orchids show a bee wandering diversity of floral patterns many of which have evolved to attract the right pollinator insect bees and bumblebees and ensure guaranteed pollination by it not all orchids are offer rewards the mediterranean orchids of years employ sexual deceit to get pollination done by an species of bee one petal of its flower bears an uncanny resemblance of the female of the bee in size color and marking the female sorry the male bee is attracted to what it perceives as a female and pseudo copulates with pseudo copulates copulates with the flower and during that process is dusted with pollen from the flower when the same bee pseudo copulates with the another flower it transfer pollen to it and thus pollinate the flower here you can also see how co evolution operates if the female bee color patterns change even slightly for any reason during evolution pollination success will be reduced unless the orchid flower co evolves to maintain the resemblance of its petal to the female bee summary as a branch of ecology sorry as a branch of biology ecology is the study of relationship of living organisms with the abiotic physiochemical factors and biotic components other species of their environment it is concerned with four levels of biological organization organism population communities and biomes evolutionary changes through natural selection takes place at the population level and hence population ecology is an important area of ecology a population is a group of individual of a tree given species sharing competing for similar resource in a defined geographical area population have attributes that an individual organism do not birth rate and death rate sex ratio and age distribution the proportion of different age group of male and female in a population is often presented graphically as age pyramid its shape indicate whether a population is stationary growing or declining ecological effect of any factor on a population are generally reflected in its size population density which may be expressed in different ways numbers biomass percent cover etc depending on its species on the species population grow through birth and immigration and decline through death and immigration when resources are unlimited the growth is usually exponential but when resources become progressively limiting the growth pattern turns logistic in either case growth is ultimately limited by the carrying capacity of the environment the intrinsic rate of natural increase r is a measure of the inherent potential of a population to grow in nature population of different species in a habitat do not live in isolation but interact in many ways depending on the outcome this interaction between two species are classified as competition both species suffer predation and parasitism one species benefit and the other suffers commensalism one benefit and the other is unaffected commensalism one is harmed other is unaffected and mutualism both species benefits predation is a very important process through which trophic energy transfers is facilitated and some predators help in controlling their prey population plant have evolved diverse morphological and chemical defense against herbivory in competition it is 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 presumed that the superior competitor eliminate the inferior one the competitive exclusion principle but many closely related species have evolved various mechanisms which facilitate their coexistence
some of the most fascinating cases of mutualism in nature are seen in plant pollinator interaction so the chapter is almost over